I was out all night with friends, you know, having a good time. And I crashed on my buddy's couch. And I remember like coming to and on his coffee table was this Time magazine. And the article, the, the headline was a tragedy in Sudan. And it was this picture of this mother like holding her little baby. And it was just, I start flipping through it. All the images were really heartbreaking, but also um, they just kind of spoke to me and, and locked me in. And I was reading the article as well, but the images first were the things yeah. that just got me. The, the photographer's name, I've never met him, uh, but his name's uh, James Nakwe, or Jim Nakwe. He was a, a war photographer. And the reason my buddy had that magazine is he was very interested in photography and this was like his idol. So he had that, that's why oh, he had that's that thing. Interesting. And so I just was like, all right, I am going. And, and part of it was maybe the hangover. Part of it was like being that, you felt that, called. Yeah, I felt called. And I'd felt stuck for a long time. And I was like, this is how I get unstuck. Like, you just got to make a change. You got to do something different. So just go. How long were you there? I know the visa was 60 days, but I think I was there a little less than that. But it was okay. a good, if, several weeks, you know. I flew out, land in the capital. I get to the air, Just the airport alone was like chaos. And yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, and, and it, not just chaos, but just culture shock. I guess I was sort of prepared, but until you're around it, and it's just... It's beyond just seeing people dress differently. It's the, you know, now you're hearing the different languages, things smell different, everything is different, you know, food and people. It's just, it's very yeah. different. So did you have like yeah. a God, like did, no, did you didn't have no any, contact, you had no, no like nothing. point of contact. You, you arrive in Chad in the airport. You don't know where you're going to go, where you're going to stay, who you're going to talk to. I lied, honestly. I found where the UNHCR, United Nations High Commission for Refugees, they had their planes that would fly across the Sahara out to uh, Abeche was the name of this town that was near the camps, right? But it's like a 20 hour drive and a you know, couple hour flight or whatever. So I found out where those planes were taken off from and I went to this, there was this little chatty man with like a clipboard, like, you know, with the manifest and of course I'm not on it, but I talked to him and I was like, hey, you know, I'm supposed to be on yeah, this flight. Exactly. That's exactly what I said. You know, and he's like, What organization are you with? And I I don't remember which one I said, but I said one of them. And I had all I had is like this one like shoulder, like a you know, this the Indiana Jones satchel, you know, we'll circle back to that. <laughs> and uh, but it had like toothbrush, malaria pills, you know, a couple power bars, change of boxer shorts, socks, nether shirt, that's about it. And I was like, this is like I I, I got robbed, you know, in Paris on my way here, and so they took all my documentation and all my other clothes and everything. I never had any of that, that's all I brought, but I don't like, but I, I mean, I promise you, like, what else would I be doing here? And yeah. it's my American passport, and I'm, I'm here to volunteer, you know? And so he was like, okay, and he just believed it, and they put me to work, and so I was out there in the camps, you know, I stayed in the camps, you know, with the people, and every day, it was like, I mean, it's very simple. I was assisting in the medical centers, have, you know, helping pass out food rations, helping build the tents, playing soccer with the kids every day. I was the only kind of young guy that wasn't like a doctor, you know, that was white, to be completely honest. And when they found out I was from America, they all wanted to hear about America. You know, they were just like enamored by it, understandably, because it, it is it is a beacon of hope to a lot of people, you know, and I know we're not perfect, I'm not saying that, but yeah. if you go to much of the world, especially the developing world, they're they're like, when they find out you're from America, they're like, oh my gosh, because it's pop culture and movies and all that stuff too, you know what I mean? But oh yeah, the American dream is a very real thing. I think we're still the number one destination for immigrants that want to build a better life, is to come to America. Right, Which right. I wish more Americans could see through that lens. Yeah. <laughs> How did experiencing that change the way you saw the country. I gained my patriotism there, <laughs> honestly. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Nate Boyer. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.